Who are the madness teams for 2024 in college football? These are teams that they, they may not go undefeated with a national championship. They definitely could do that. But by the way their schedule lines up, by nature of what they have on their roster, they could definitely cause some chaos across the board. And the team that I think we've got to talk about first here, from a scheduling perspective, news broke yesterday they're going to have to play this schedule from an SEC level at least, two different years, and two years in a row rather, this year in 2025 will be a home-and-home home swing. Florida can cause absolute chaos in 2024. They have a Hunger Games stretch to end the season. They got Georgia in Jacksonville, then they go to Texas, then they play LSU, then they play Ole Miss, and then they're at Florida State. By my count, with this expanded playoff format, that is five potential playoff teams that Florida will have a, a chance to take a swing at. Let's just say Florida goes three and two in that stretch. If they go two and three in that stretch, they are changing the way that someone is looking at their postseason whether they were going to be a team that was making it to Atlanta, now they're not, whether they were a team that was maybe going to have a chance to have a first-round buy in that college football playoff, and now they're not. Florida is going to have a chance to really cause some chaos if they go about it the way they would like to go about it in Gainesville. And let's make sure we say this too. Florida, with all the things being said about Billy Napier, all the things said about Graham Mertz, they are not nearly as far off as a lot of people would lead you to believe. What we said last year for Florida Hey, if they can have a one-win improvement from 2022 to 2023, I think that's a success. Everybody knew, hey, Florida, they could have a down year. The over-under win total for them last season was five and a half wins. They won five games, and now everybody is just crucifying Billy Napier and saying he's not a good coach because they achieved about what people expected them to achieve preseason. I digress. But going back to what I said, seven wins was the number that we put on them for an expectation of a positive season. They had two games, Missouri and Arkansas, to where the play did not swing their way. They did not make a play in that moment, both a missed field goal and then also given up a long fourth down conversion to Missouri. Missed the field goal in the Arkansas game, and they gave up that fourth down conversion against Missouri. The bottom line is two different outcomes equal a totally different record for Florida, and they get to that seven win total. All I want to say is don't buy the narrative that Florida's just down bad. Still a lot of talent on that roster. Billy Napier still, I believe, is a good football coach. Keep an eye on Florida. Could cause some absolute chaos, some madness in 2024. Another madness team, man, just by nature of nobody knowing what to expect is the good folks out there in Louisville, Kentucky. Notice, that's not Louisville. Louisville, right? The Brom squad, baby. They took double-digit transfers, almost 30 transfers yet again in this second uh, year under Jeff Brom. They're at Notre Dame. They got Miami. And they're at Clemson that first weekend in November. The game at Notre Dame, man, let's just start here. Notre Dame, they obviously have playoff aspirations. Marcus Freeman, someone that we are a big fan of on this show. But Notre Dame, they don't get conference championship weekend. So what does that mean? Their margin for error shrinks a good bit. Remember Louisville, Notre Dame came to town and... Uh, Louisville busted up their college football playoff hopes at that point in time. So you could see a repeat of that. They got to go to South Bend, but the bottom line here is massive, massive chaos game for the cards. And then Miami, man, Miami could be undefeated when they play them. But the deal is, just like Notre Dame, they got to go to Louisville. We'll see if it's a night game. You'd hope it's a night game if you're a good fan in Louisville. Uh, that could be a game that really shakes up the ACC race. It could shake up Miami's ACC title hopes. And then that game at Clemson, man, that could send the entire fan base out there in Clemson, South Carolina, into an absolute whirlwind. I mean, if, if you lose that game in November to Louisville, and this is no shade to Louisville, just if you're a Clemson fan, you've probably thought of yourself as a, a team that is kind of in that tier one level in the ACC. You just sort of expect to be to Louisville. I don't know if that's the case this year. We'll pick it when it gets here, but the chaos that could be, uh, be upon that entire operation in Clemson, South Carolina should not be overlooked when it comes to that game. UCF is another chaos team, another madness team. They could punch an absolute hole in the Big 12. Good news, the madness is here. Need to sneak in those tournament games while at work? Prime Video has you covered. Watch every game live on your phone, on your laptop, or Relax and watch at home on Prime Video with a subscription. Prime Video gives you choices to add on channels like Paramount Plus and Max, both featuring March Madness tournament games all in one place. It's March, it's Madness, stream it all on Prime Video. 
They play two more or less top 10 teams. We'll see where they are when, when we get to this point in the season. But preseason, Arizona is number 11 and Utah is number 10. Not just in their respective conference, obviously not because that would be ridiculous, but in, in the entire country, Arizona is number 11, Utah is number 10. Both of those teams have playoff aspirations, conference title aspirations. They have to go to UCF. Got to go to the bounce house, Gus Malzahn and company, and go and see them. UCF, if they were to hand out L's in at least one of those, that would change the conference title race. And then on top of this, both of those games, I believe, are in the month of November. KJ Jefferson is six foot three, 250 pounds. It's not fun to tackle him. It's not fun to tackle him in late August, much less after you've had to tackle dudes the entirety of a season. You've got to play him in November. So keep an eye on that, man. That's going to be a massive, massive madness team. And oh, by the way, we talked about Florida a little bit and how tensions might be a little bit higher out there. Imagine if UCF goes to the swamp October 5th and beats Florida. Madness. Madness in every sense of the word. One more madness team we want to get to here. How about Auburn, man? They, I, I think they are the ultimate Terminator team in 2024. They will be back. And this is the year where I think they try and come back against some of these teams that they were very close against last year. Took Georgia to the final drive. Took Alabama to the final play. Auburn's got some unfinished business. You'd have to believe there's a little bit of confidence from the way that those games went for Auburn being so close. You know, you know close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. Again, a weird saying. Don't know how that ever became a saying, but I think it's a saying nonetheless. They play Oklahoma at Georgia, at Missouri, play A&M, and they're at Bama. There is, I think, a, uh, a lot within Auburn that is still developing from a roster standpoint. Like last year, they pulled in a lot of guys, and the question was, okay, talent level is better. Can they mesh? That won't be a question this year. It's not a question of can they mesh. The expectation is now that they have meshed. Peyton Thorne gets a full spring. I'm just saying they could send a massive ripple effect across the SEC if they were to do some damage against those teams that we just mentioned because they're going to have a brutal schedule, but... New play caller on offense with Hugh Freeze, new DC and DJ Dirk. And I'm just saying, things could get a little bit weird when it comes to the college football landscape in 2024. Not just madness on the hardwood, a lot of madness about to ensue this coming fall. Hey, y'all, thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.